Luca is here. Luca Nazardo, I'm pleased to welcome. He is a cryptography researcher in Protocol Lab's CryptoNet Lab, where his research interests include vector commitments, contingent payments, and um, zero knowledge proof systems. And today he will be speaking to us about storage metric style. Welcome, Luca. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to give this talk. Um, thanks for the introduction. I hope you can hear me well. I'm a researcher in the CryptoNet uh, lab that, as you know, since Nicola gave a presentation a few hours ago, it's a, a cryptography, an applied cryptography um, working group inside the protocol labs. And in particular, uh, in the last few months, I have been working on, on protocol opportunities which is basically a working group that is working towards improving protocols for, for Web3. And this presentation is about one of the projects that we have been uh, working on in the last few months, and it's about storage metrics um, for retrieval incentives. So the main question that we want to answer um, here is how to incentivize high quality of service. So we know that Filecoin already takes care uh, of uh, file being stored in the network. But if I am a client and I want to basically put my data in Filecoin, I also want to be sure that when I want my data back, the data is going to be uh, back in my hands. And so just to, I mean, a, a question that we could ask ourselves is, who should I store my file with? Like, how do I pick my, my storage providers? Uh, and this project tries to, to answer this question, and we will see where we are, where we are uh, moving towards, and how can we get there. So the goals that we have in this project are, uh, first, having some on-chain metrics for storage providers that are realistic and objective, and that are on-chain. If we have this kind of metrics, then we can use them to reward storage providers accordingly. Not only that, we want that uh, storage providers optimize toward these metrics because it's rational for them to do so. So it's going to be convenient for them to, to, to give high quality of service because our protocol will, will make it possible. Um, we will put in place a reward system that we aim to build as interoperable with others, right? Uh, everyone can build some reward system on top of ours and make it work with ours, uh, improve it, like refine it, and basically do whatever you want. Uh, and not only that, we are not focusing only on Filecoin specifically, but we think that our um, our um, our metrics uh, um, our metrics DAO could be also useful in many other applications in Web3. For example, there are like other application, other applications that are computing over data that could profit by having some sort of uh, metrics DAO on top of it in order to, to make reputation systems for, uh, for service providers, uh, not only storage ones. So what's the long-term plan? We want, of course, this, um, this, net, this metric network to be decentralized like no central authority involved, uh, open, meaning that uh, both on the auditor side and on the, pro on the service provider, storage provider side, it should be incentivized in order to be sustainable on both sides. And it should be resistant to auditor collusions. Like we do not really want auditors to kind of, you know, uh, be allowed to, to set up a cartel and influence um, these metrics in one way or another. In essence, what we are targeting is like having honest reporting as the best strategy for auditors. And this is, as we will see in, in what follows, not so trivial to achieve. How do we get there? So uh, we imagine a network of auditors that scan a network according to some metrics that we identified and that we can uh, update on the way uh, whenever we, we think that it's the right moment. Uh, there is also an incentive to report through metrics, and that's, you know, uh, in order to make, as I was saying before, uh, honest reporting as, um, as the rational strategy. We also need to have a system to, ag to aggregate metrics on chain because it's not feasible that, you know, as long as uh, the, um, the auditor uh, sets scales, uh, we, everyone posts his own result on chain. 
And of course, there is also an incentive for storage providers that provide good service, because if not, there is no point in, in all of this. So which are the metrics that we identified? Uh, for now, we identified three basic metrics about retrieval that are time to first byte, average retrieval speed, and retrieval success rate. But we are open in the future to introduce uh, more, uh, uh, more metrics to be, to be taken into account. And of course, uh, this, this protocol would like to be, I mean, aims to be metric agnostic in a sense that you can plug in the metrics that you want and, and make it work. So what's the overview of the protocol that we have in mind? Um, talking at high level, we imagine a committee of auditor that query ideally each storage provider individually. The second step is auditors taking part to a survey, which basically is, you can think of it as like answering some questions about uh, uh, storage providers' performances. Um, each individual, the individual surveys are then um, aggregated, a final and aggregated result is extracted and posted on chain. And then both storage providers and auditors are, um, are um, rewarded for, for providing good service. On the storage provider side, this will have to do with the metrics that they got in the aggregated results. And with the auditors, that would be according to you know, the accuracy of the metrics that they provided um, to, the, to the auditor network. So of course we cannot uh, you know, get everything in one shot and we have identified four milestones to, to make this project happen. The first milestone is the milestone we are actually in uh, today and it's the initial consortium one. Uh, so the, the first thought on our side was there are a lot of uh, people and a lot of entities that are already scanning the, net, the Filecoin network for their own purposes, for building a reputation system based maybe not on retrieval, but on, on other parameters. And so we basically have an, an ongoing open call for partners that are interested in joining um, uh, forces with us uh, with the aim of building this auditing consor consortium. Uh, of course, at this stage, uh, e even if, you know, uh, the data that each entity has is uh, kind of partial. They do not really uh, scan the entire network. They do not test retrieval on all the storage providers. Uh, at this particular stage, it's fine. Uh, we think that it's better to, to start and to refine everything on the way. Um, and the result of this first stage would be to have a non-chain reputation system for storage services based on the observation of this initial consortium. We envision this initial con consortium to be kind of small, like five to 10 entities working together as a sort of auditing league um, and, 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 ask, and querying storage providers of, uh, of Filecoin for, for technical reasons. Um, the second milestone is to open uh, to anyone to join um, the, the storage metrics uh, DAO as a retrieval provider. So basically, we are we, in the second phase, we are not focusing only on Falcon storage providers, but ideally anyone, for instance, an IPFS node can become a storage, a retrieval provider being audited by the network. Um, and we, we can get there by, for example, using some project that Protocol Labs is developing internally, like indices, uh, where people are basically uh, publishing a list of, uh, of files, of deals that they are uh, willing to, uh, to provide on request. The third milestone is actually introducing uh, incentives for, um, for storage providers uh, and retrieval providers. Uh, and that would be like uh, uh, where actually we are testing uh, our protocol uh, <clears throat> in, in, the re in the real life. Uh, like seeing how the, the storage providers are reacting to, um, to, to our um, auditing services. And the fourth milestone would be, uh, of course, uh, creating a reward program for, for auditors. And that would need, will need uh, like crypto economics insights and also allow anyone to become an auditor. So we are basically passing through uh, from a, a phase where we have a few entities that kind of, you know, are already working on, on Filecoin metrics to some extent uh, or on storage metrics to some extent to open it to anybody that can join as an auditor um, 
like uh, in order to make the auditor league uh, going at scale. So now, which are the, the very next question that we need to answer in order to advance? The first one is how to, to structure the final survey protocol. Um, and basically the main issue that we have, I mean, that everyone that is uh, working on, on such topics have, is supporting collusion. So we started this journey by, by investigating some Bayesian truth serum-like mechanism, uh, which are used usually in psychology in order to test behavior of people. Uh, and we thought at the beginning that that could be, you know, something that we could apply in practice because, you know, these, these mechanisms are rewarding uh, um, unexpected results. So we were thinking that maybe this could basically uh, force people to, to say unexpected truth and to find unexpected behaviors of, of storage providers. But un unfortunately, I mean, either internally and also collaborating with external researchers, we figured out that such uh, tools were not designed to support collusion. And so they're not kind of applicable to scenarios where uh, you know, there are uh, uh, entities that are communicating daily together and they can exchange uh, uh, or they, are, they can have interest in exchanging information. So the main focus is making collusion irrational for the auditors uh, or at least detectable and in general making honest reporting being the best strategy. The second question that we have is should we anonymize uh, auditors or making them indistinguishable from, uh, from uh, generic clients? Why do I say that? Uh, so the key question that we want to answer is, the, the key point that we want to answer is, we want um, these metrics to be reliable. And in order to be reliable, basically we, we should avoid storage providers to behave in a different way when they are talking with uh, an auditor and when they're, and when they're talking with, with, let's say, clients that are not auditors. So here we have two options. The first option is more, let's say, protocol heavy, which is uh, the protocol by himself anonymizes the auditors. And the second option is <clears throat> auditors actually are, is in their interest to put in place mechanisms for which they can spot such behavior from, uh, from the storage providers. And basically at this stage, we can reevaluate in the future maybe, but at this stage we are leaning towards option two. And the reason is that uh, it's of interest of anybody that these metrics are accurate. And so uh, auditors can actually either cooperate themselves, they cooperate with like uh, clients, they can set up multiple identities in order to make this detection more difficult. But we think that, you know, the, the system is like self-governing himself at some point. Um, the second thing, that the other thing that we that we can that the one can argue is like most of the metrics that we want to measure depend or are influenced by proximity, uh, and again, uh, the we we have different options on the table. We can we can brainstorm about that if if anyone has ideas. But one option could be like divide storage providers in clusters depending on location or like auditors having multiple nodes in different locations. And that's something that some organization already have for other purposes. Um, the thing that we, I want to stress is like, all this project works well for everybody and especially for auditors if the measures are accurate. And so it's on, or on auditors interest to make the measures as accurate as, as possible because this will maximize their reward. Um, so how can you get updates on this project? Uh, we are working in the open. You can go to the Notion page um, of this project and you can find all the updates that, uh, that happen uh, over time. The team is uh, composed by myself. And you find me on, on Falcon Slack in, on the end of Luca. It's um, composed by Irene and Nicola. And then we have also external research collaborators focused more on, on game theory uh, from the Oris University. And we have internal engineering support by the Bedrock team. Thank you. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, Luca. Any questions to Luca? Storage metrics staff.
you kind of touched on this with the voting protocol, but um, I guess, are there any other ideas you all have for making sure the auditors don't collude? So th that's a really good question. And that's something that we are actually, you know, actively working on. Um, there are different countermeasures. These protocols are, may, are basically um, divided in two steps, which are like voting rules and, uh, and rewarding rule and payment rule, where payment is like the reward that, that the auditors are, are getting. And so one intuition that we have is like, if you have, for example, a per round fixed reward, and this is like actually your payment rule, this would like not encourage you to share your observation with others. Why? Because basically, if you are confident that your observation is accurate, sharing your knowledge with other people would in the long term lower down your, uh, your per round uh, uh, reward. Uh, of course, this is only an intuition for now, but we are kind of confident that we can put this in place. And, and the other thing on the voting rules are like there are uh, results that add some sort of redundancy and randomness in the voting uh, algorithm that could help uh, making collusion ineffective somehow. We will post news on the website, but I mean, feel free to reach out if you want to know more. Uh, this is something that we are particularly working with our external collaborators uh, on, on game theory. So I would be much than happy to, to keep talking about that. Thanks. We have time for a few more. Is there any prior art that exists in other projects, either other decentralized projects, or like you said, research in other areas that would have to deal with auditors and service providers not colluding? So uh, kind of surprisingly, uh, it's, to the best of my knowledge, it's not that common to, to have people studying such, uh, such uh, kind of protocols. And indeed, we try to, you know, to, to get around some, some limitation of the BTS uh, protocol. And actually, you know, after talking with, with many people, which is not our primary area of expertise, so we had to basically uh, ask other experts, uh, it's kind of an unexplored land, and we really think that in, in the Web3 setting, it would be, you know, an interesting research direction to pursue. Uh, and we are actually, you know, trying to, to understand if like a long-term research plan on this is something that maybe we can, we can get into in the future. But it's not, the thing is like, long story short, is like all the work that has been done in doing this kind of surveys did not take into account collusion because basically people were not really interested in, in getting other people's um, uh, opinion. Uh, one, one classic example is like you are in a, in a department store and people tell you, do you, do you like more, you know, the, this book or this other book? And you want to basically build a survey on that. For this kind of, of situation, there are, you know, BTS-like mechanisms that work pretty well. Uh, and force people to tell the truth. But if you think you know, about this for a second, you are not really interested in what other people are, are liking. Like you, you are happy with what you like. Well, instead here, and when you basically put incentives on top and when you, when you basically enter in, in systems like blockchain where people you know, communicate and, and exchange information all the time, it's much more difficult to come up with something that is kind of effective. We have time for a couple more questions. Any other questions to Luca? If not, then I have one. There was a mention, you mentioned the auditor system. Um, their identities, they want to work on sort of a secret shopper model with the storage providers maybe, so they don't, they have to, there might be some identity obfuscation there. Can you walk me through again, who knows who the auditors are? Is there, who's holding that kind of information? I mean, in th that's exactly the point. Uh, there are two options here. There is the option where nobody knows who the auditor are, uh, especially when they run the survey. Like maybe you know that there is some organization who, who is an auditor, who is auditing the, the network, but you don't know like under which identity is, is auditing the network. But you know, you can always backtrack on, and do this kind of thing. So either you enforce this by protocol, um, but this, you know, adds some sort of uh, complexity burden to the whole protocol, 
or you basically play under the assumption that since being undetectable and, and having you know uh, reliable metrics is uninterested of all the auditors, then the auditors themselves would, would put in place um, their own countermeasures, which can mean you know making deals with like clients, which would mean like having different clusters that uh, uh, that query different storage providers and so on and so forth. And for now, we are basically uh, leaning towards the, the second option. Wow. Thanks again, Luca, for walking us through that very complex system and the system design.